Welcome to the pre-application webinar for Libraries Transforming Communities Focus on Small and Rural Libraries. In this session, we will be covering everything you need to be aware of in order to apply for one of the $3,000 grants for small and or rural libraries. Before we dig in, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Mary Davis Fournier, and I'm the director of the Libraries Transforming Communities Project and deputy director of the American Library Association Public Programs Office. Throughout this session, I'll be taking you through the grant guidelines, providing you with tips on how to write a competitive application, and showing you how to submit your proposal using the Foundant application system. I also just want to make a quick note that the first portion of this presentation is pre-recorded. Following the presentation, there will be time for a live Q&A to answer any questions you may have. Libraries Transforming Communities, or LTC as we call it, Focus on Small and Rural Libraries is an initiative that seeks to provide community engagement resources and opportunities specific to the needs of library workers who serve small and rural communities. We are grateful to our partners at the Association for Small and Rural Libraries for their ongoing collaboration with this project. As part of this initiative, ALA will provide $3,000 grants to up to 650 libraries serving small and or rural communities to develop and lead community efforts and we will provide library workers with facilitation skills via the Libraries Transforming Communities Facilitation Skills for Small and Rural Libraries e-course and facilitation guide. So even during this challenging time, and especially maybe during this time, libraries are serving their patrons in new and important ways through community engagement. For those of you who may be less familiar with the term community engagement. It is the process of working collaboratively with community members, be they library patrons, residents, faculty, students, or partner organizations, for the betterment of the community. So in this section, we'll talk about what you need to know before applying for one of these $3,000 grants. First thing, you'll need to check that you are eligible for this opportunity. The great news is that this grant is open to all types of libraries, including public, academic, community college, K through 12, tribal libraries, and special libraries. However, applicant libraries must serve small and or rural communities in the United States or a United States territory. So what is a small and or rural community? We could talk about that all day, but for the purposes of this grant, per the Institute of Museum and Library Services definition, a small community is one that is a populated area of 25,000 or less. And a rural community is one that is more than or equal to five miles from an urbanized area. An urbanized area means 25,000 people or more than 25,000 people. The other eligibility requirement that you must meet in order to qualify for this grant is that your institution or someone within your institution must be a member of either the American Library Association or the Association for Small and Rural Libraries. If you have any questions about whether your library qualifies as a small or rural library or about your membership status with either ACE, ARSL, or ALA, please email the Public Programs Office at publicprograms at ala.org and we'll work with you to term, determine whether you qualify. So let's say your library is eligible. What exactly is it that your library will get? Well, if you are selected for funding, you will receive $3,000 to support expenses related to a community engagement project. These funds can be spent on a wide variety of things to support your work. The eligible expenses are very broad. We'll talk about them in more detail in a few minutes, but they range from anything from PPE to hotspots to staff time. You'll also receive professional development consisting of the LTC Facilitation Skills for Small and Rural Libraries Asynchronous eCourse, 
And you'll also receive a suite of online resources developed to support community awareness of your library's efforts, including template press releases, social media messaging, digital promotional materials, and template letters that can be used to notify your local leaders or officials about the library's project. We will try to keep the burden of creation of any of these things as light as possible. And ALA project staff will also be available to help throughout your project. Finally, you'll get technical and project support from the ALA Public Programs Office through the grant term, such as access to online learning opportunities for you as a grantee that will be intended to assist you in promoting your conversation, completing grant reporting requirements, and participating in the evaluation. You'll also be connected with community of practice for you as a project director and your colleagues who may be also helping you do this work. So now that you know what your library will receive, let's talk about what you will be required to do. So the requirements are pretty straightforward. You need to complete a six-part asynchronous e-course teaching facilitation skills. It's about a four-hour commitment. You need to host at least one conversation with community members using the skills that you learned in the e-course. And then you need to share what you've learned in this process and from your community. I'm going to break this down just a little bit in more detail in the next couple of slides. So in terms of the e-course, First, the person leading the grant project, the project director at your library, will need to participate in the facilitation skills for small libraries, small and rural libraries, asynchronous e-course. We estimate this course will take approximately four hours to complete, and this slide shows you the six modules and the topics they cover. Taking this course is not limited to you as a project director. Your colleagues can join you. It is an asynchronous course, so you can do this at your own pace. Once the project director completes the e-course, you'll need to host at least one conversation with community members, and it can be anything from using the conversation cafe model to talk to your community about a topic of interest, to hosting a one book, one community project, to facilitating a dialogue on a broader issue. Everything that you need to know about leading a community conversation, from what to do when planning a conversation, how to facilitate the discussion on the day of the event, and what should be done afterward to follow up with participants is in this course. So after the conversation, you'll be asked to share out what you heard or learned, and you can do that in many different ways that I'll get into in, an, in one of the later slides. So, these conversations, what in the world should they be about? Well, for your community conversation, we want you to cover any topic that is relevant to your community. This could include anything from public health concerns, um, what is going on with job seeking and unemployment in your community, e-learning, school closures, or even using a book or film as a way to springboard a discussion about an issue that your community is grappling with. We really want you to focus on facilitating a conversation and building these skills and focus on a subject that's important to the community your library serves in a way that works best for them. So this could mean hosting an in-person conversation outside the library that maintains social distancing best practices, or it could mean leading a virtual conversation on Zoom. There are many possibilities. Following your conversation, you'll need to publicly report and share out information about the content or outcomes from the conversation. And you can do this also in a number of ways. You can write an article and submit it to a local newspaper or media outlet, or you could just post something about it to your library's social media. You can create a video and post it to your library's YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or other social media. You could write and send a letter or an email to a regional leader or state legislator or another elected official about the conversation and what your community, what you learned from your community. You could 
create a library blog or podcast about the issues discussed or add it to your existing one um, during the conversation or even about the process itself for you. And you can also use PLA's Project Outcome Civic Community Engagement Platform or ACRL's Project Outcome Events and Programs areas to collect and share feedback from your participants about the conversation with uh, your library leadership or trustees or board. And if project outcome and PLA and ACRL's project outcome seem like things you have no idea of or have not heard of, no worries. Uh, these are just great free platforms for gathering community feedback that allow libraries to have their own dashboard um, and to do some very uh, easily manageable evaluation and impact feedback from uh, community members. And we'll have lots more about that um, later in, the, in this grant opportunity. So let's talk about, once you have the grant, what you can spend the money on. Um, with the wide range of ways that you can choose to implement a community conversation, we wanted to make sure that the eligible expenses are flexible enough to meet the needs of a variety of projects and community engagement work. So due to this, the grant funds can be used on anything to support your community engagement project. This may include, but is not limited to, program, programming materials such as markers, post-its, paper, etc., um, staff time to work on this, books or audiobooks, ebooks, hotspots to lend out to your community members so that they can participate in the library's work, personal protective equipment, PPE, um, space rental, marketing materials, speaker fees, so much more. The grant funds may not be used to support indirect costs, specifically general library administrative expenses. That is the main restriction on use of these grant funds, indirect costs. Now that we've gone over all the requirements, let's dive into the actual proposal. For this, I'll be walking you through the various application components in Foundant, our grant platform. To access the application, click the Apply Online link that you see circled in the slide on the Grant Opportunity Information page. This will open the login page for Foundant in a new window. If you have previously used the Foundant system to apply for a grant through ALA's Public Programs Office, simply enter your email address and password and log in by pressing the blue button. Note that your login information for Foundant is not the same as your login information if you have an ALA membership. This is a separate system. If you have not used the Foundant system, click the gray Create New Account button to set up a profile. However, if you believe that someone else at your organization may already have created an account with Foundant to apply for a different grant opportunity, please click the link to verify with our grant administrator before setting up a new account. Since the majority of you may not already have an existing login, I'm going to spend the next two slides walking you through how to set up the login for the system. If you need to create an account, you'll be asked to provide organization information, user information, and executive director information with an option to select if the user is the executive director or library director. Fill in the required fields and click the Next button to navigate through these sections. Once you get to the final section, create a password and then click Create Account. As soon as you do that, you'll receive an email verification to the email address you've just provided. Once you receive this email, click I have received the email to continue. After you have either set up your new account or logged straight in, you'll be directed to this screen. From here, you may click Apply to begin your application. That's the circle blue button on the screen. At this point, you can also access the guidelines. See the link on the screen with the arrow next to it? 
And remember, if at any point you want to grab those guidelines or check the FAQ for this grant opportunity, you can also find them on the project page at ala.org forward slash LTC. So after you press the apply button, you will be in the application. And although I'm showing these sections to you in a series of screen capture slides, on the screen in the application, you will see that the application is a multi-section form that you're going to scroll down through to navigate. And the main sections in that form are project name, complete project director information, library information, narrative, upload materials, sign application, and then finally submit. The project guidelines walk you through this whole entire application in detail, but I'll also do a quick walkthrough here. Your first step in the instruction section is to simply type LTC into the project name field. You see it circled on the screen. The next section is the project director section. Please fill out the requested fields with contact information for your library's project director. Note that this information will not be pre-populated from your user profile for the Foundant system. In this section, you'll be also be asked to provide your congressional district. If you do not know this information off the top of your head, you can just click the link labeled United States House of Representatives and the Find Your Representative website will be opened in a new window. You'll be also be asked on this page how you heard about this opportunity. Please select all the options that apply. Next is the library section. Here you will use the drop down menus to select your library type, the total population served, and your community type. In this section, you will also be asked to provide information about your ALA or ARSL membership. As a reminder, personal or institutional ALA or ARSL membership is a requirement for this grant. One or the other. You don't need to be a member of both. If you have questions about your membership status, or where to find your membership number, please contact public programs at ALA.org. If you're not currently a member and you would like to become one, see the FAQ section of the LTC Grant Opportunity website for links to join either organization. Next is the proposal narrative section. I'm going to spend a little time here. This is the, the heart of your application. So this is a section where you're going to explain what you're proposing. There are links provided to the grant guidelines and the leading conversations in small and rural libraries facilitation guide. We strongly encourage you to read both of these before preparing your responses to the narrative section of this application. They will really help you structure a plan. Note that each narrative response needs to be limited to 600 words or less. So you may want to prepare your answers in a Word document or another type of document and just paste those answers into the application when you're ready. The narrative questions are in four sections. Community library information, topic or issue, goals and plan. There's also a budget se section, but we'll do that next. So under community and library information, this is your opportunity to really describe your library and the community it serves. Please include demographics, dynamics in the community, key issues or challenges that the community is facing and that the library is facing. In the conversation topic or issue section, please describe the topic or issue that your community engagement project will focus on. Why is it important for your library community to discuss this particular issue or topic? How did you get to this particular issue or topic? For example, did you talk with library patrons, reach out to other area organizations or partners, dig into some data about your community? There are many ways to explain this. Also, how will your library and or community 
benefit from having these discussions? What do you hope the benefit will be? What does the data or the feedback you've received show the opportunity is there? Next is conversation goals. So describe your library's goal or purpose for this project plan. What are you aiming to accomplish? For instance, are you hoping to enhance library resources based on community input? Do you want to explore a topic or build understanding of others' experiences? Do you want to generate ideas or explore options or make a decision? Do you want to discussion, discuss an issue um, and collaboratively determine some next steps in your community? There are many options. They're also in the uh, guidelines. There are a number of um, example possibilities to get your ideas flowing. The next section is conversation planning. How do you envision your conversation taking place? For example, are you going to have a virtual book club discussion? Are you going to do a socially distanced conversation outside at the library using the National Issues Forum model? There are a number of uh, different conversation models that also are linked to in the project guidelines if you're wanting to reference some of those, if any of them feel like they're a good fit. Here, think about uh, you know whether you feel you're able to describe how you envision your conversation will take place, or if you are entirely new to this and planning to learn these skills through the required online course, talk about that here. Also talk about what kind of outreach or marketing you plan to do for this community engagement conversation. Talk here about how you're planning to share what you're doing with the community, either locally or at large. For example, are you going to try to write an article for the local newspaper, create a video about what was discussed um, for the library social media? There are also lots more examples in the guidelines that you can look over and see if any of them feel like a good fit for this. So budget. In the narrative section, it's the last section, you'll also be asked to provide detailed information about your proposed budget. So here, describe your plans for spending the $3,000 in grant funds. What will you use the funding to purchase or support? Please be as specific as you can be. For example, if you plan to use $1,000 on staff time to support the community engagement um, project by you know, developing it, planning it, implementing it. Um, if you want to spend $200 to purchase a Zoom business license so that you can host virtual conversations. The total amount, no matter what, of your proposed budget should add up to the $3,000 of the grant. Here, you can upload documents. Here you can upload letters of support. These are not required, but they are suggested. They can be from your uh, members of your community. Um, they can be from uh, leaders and stakeholders in your community. They could be from partners that you, you work with as a library in your programming. You can also here upload any additional materials that might provide more information about your proposal such as sample promotional materials. If you've already mapped out your discussion, you can upload draft discussion questions. All of these, up these uploads are optional, but they might help to make your application more competitive amongst the pool of applicants. In the final section, you will need to provide contact information from a certifying official. This should be anyone with your library who is able to submit applications for funding on behalf of the institution. This individual may vary depending on the institution, but typically this is the library director. It can also be the same person listed as the project director or and or the person submitting the proposal as long as they are able to submit applications for funding on behalf of their institution. 
You will also be asked in this area to certify that your organization is neither presently debarred, suspended, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, nor voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency. To check the status of your institution, click System for Award Management. See the arrow? Click there. This will open the SAM.gov website in a new window where you can search for your institution and verify that your organization is not listed as ineligible. Once you've completed all information, you can click Submit Application. Once you submit, you can no longer edit your application. If you're not ready to submit yet, you can save application and will be able to access your draft when you log back into your account using the edit application link. So not ready to submit, hit save. Ready to submit, congratulations, hit submit. To wrap us up here, um, I'd like to share some of the top tips that we've uh, gathered um, as you work on your application to keep in mind for submitting a successful and competitive application. First, be sure to read the grant guidelines carefully. They contain so much pertinent information about the opportunity that it is critical to include to ensure the competitiveness of your application. Second, be sure to thoroughly answer all the questions in the application. Provide as much detail as you can within the 600 words for each of those narrative responses. Those details will help reviewers understand your library and the project you're planning. Say to yourself, what should reviewers know about my library and my community in order to understand my proposed community engagement project? Keep in mind also that if you get letters of support, that is an opportunity for community members to speak to this on your behalf as well. Number three, whenever possible, provide numbers and examples. Provide data to justify what you are saying in the narrative. For example, if you're describing the poverty level in your community, pull some census data to help support and specify what you are saying. Next, find community partners to work with on your project. This is not a requirement, but especially during these times, partnerships and effective partnerships can go a long way to helping you reach different members of your community and also to sharing the work that is involved with community engagement. Again, while optional, we really recommend those letters of support from community stakeholders that show their commitment I can't plug that enough. It really helps show the peer reviewers the buy-in and interest in your community and the potential your community sees for this project. Then finally, if you have questions, first stop, check the FAQs that are on the project website at ala.org forward slash LTC. But please do not hesitate to reach out as well to the ALA Public Programs Office. Our team at ALA, reachable at publicprograms at ALA.org, is standing by to answer your questions, and help you work out anything that you see as an obstacle to applying for this grant. We really, really want you to feel comfortable and to feel like this is a possibility for you. And our team is committed to responding by email and phone as soon as we possibly can to your questions and concerns. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening to this presentation, this walkthrough for this grant opportunity. We're going to switch over now to a live question and answer to answer any questions you may have in this moment during this webinar. Thank you all so much.
So thank you, everyone. Thank you for being on here. We are 232 strong in this webinar um, about how to apply for this great grant opportunity. And it is just so great to see so many of you from across the country. Um, so I believe right now what we're going to do while you're adding your questions to the chat and um, or, or to the Q&A section, please, um, is we're going to go through a couple of um, timeline related slides that you can just look at to sort of understand, again, when the applications are due, when award notification happens, when funds are available for both the first application period and what will be a second application period. And in the meantime, I believe my uh, colleague, um, Samantha Oakley, and uh, is ready to toss questions that have not been answered in chat uh, and in the Q&A section at me to respond to live and uh, perhaps we'll restate some of the ones that were also brought up because they I think we have some repeaters in there as well and uh, thanks thank you all for being here great uh, thanks Mary so one of the questions that we have is how many grants are available right so in this first round there will be 200 grants awarded in this first application period. Overall, we will be awarding up to $650,000 grants. That's second application period is on the screen right now. Um, a note on that, what we have done is, um, what we are trying to do is encourage as many as possible in this first round and if your application is not selected in the first round, your application will still be, will be available in our Foundant online application system. You will be receiving an email from us letting you know that it was not selected and inviting you to um, contact us for feedback from the peer reviewers. If you choose to apply again, you will simply have you will simply be able to tweak that application to apply again. So if you do the work now, you have a great chance in the broader second round um, of being able to receive the funding. So we're trying to make this as easy a lift as possible during these times. Great. So the next question I think speaks to um, some concerns about uh, people coming to a program during this time. So um, is there a specific number of participation required for a community conversation? If no one shows up, do they have to keep doing a conversation until someone does show up? Right, such a great question. And it speaks to, I think, um, sort of a uh, concern that is widespread about this work in general. So they, immediate answer is no. We are, this is not a numbers game. We are not looking for um, a certain number of participants in your library's efforts. The goal for these grants and this project for library are for library workers to use and apply the skills that they learn through the LTC Facilitation Skills for Small and Rural Libraries asynchronous e-course, to take that course and use those skills. That's the, the first of two goals. The second goal is to provide some flexible funding to support library community engagement, especially in this time. So we are looking to, what I would advise you to do is to plan on taking that course and in your proposal to really think about making your sort of case for, um, you know, the potential as you see it for your library and your community for these funds and for doing some level of community engagement. I hope that answers the question. If it isn't, toss it in the, if you have, if I missed the immediate response there that you're really looking for, the information you're looking for, hit that Q&A again and we'll just come right back to it. 
And then the next question is, do you need a SAM account to apply? And that's SAM.gov. Samantha, I just had a little bit of a um, web delay, so I missed whether you answered the SAM question. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so, no, you don't necessarily need to be registered for SAM. Um, we just ask that you check that your library isn't um, have any uh, funding issues is flagged in SAM.gov. Great. So no separate login or checkout needed. It's really a government site that you can just put your library's name into. Right. Great. Um, the next question is, um, do you need to do a community panel first to determine what your community needs? Right. The answer is no. Um, we're, we're not expecting you to, uh, you know, do the work of all this work beforehand. We're not expecting you to have done any of this work already. Um, this really Support library community engagement. So there are, I'm sure many of you are aware, you know, information that is available about your community that you are familiar with uh, via in terms of the demographic information that's being sought um, via survey via the um, you know and the uh, state library information in your state um, you undoubtedly uh, or your library director um, communicate with your board or your uh, municipal bodies about sort of where the library's at, where the community's at. You yourself are a community expert because you are in generally in this community and working at least in this community all the time. Bring that to the table in this. Just relate that. Great, so the next question is, assuming we are awarded a grant, how long do we have to complete our project? Right, can you go back to the slide, right? Thank you. Um, so the implementation period is February 1st for this first round, February 1st to July 31st. Um, and that, what that means, this is a little, complicated because we get into fiscal spending and fiscal years. What that means is that during that period, you would be expected to um, take the e-course, put together, you know, your what you're planning to facilitate, convene a conversation, be that, uh, you know, an issues-based book discussion or a community conversation um, with external partners or whatever you feel would be uh, suit your professional development most and benefit your community most. Um, you will be required to report on this by September 30th, 2021. The reason that we have a, a further outdate for spending down grant funds is simply that we understand that libraries are on many different fiscal cycles and we wanna give you as much time to spend those funds as in the way that you planned as possible. Great, so the next question is, um, we're not sure what we will want to spend the funds on. So do you have any suggestions of how to outline that in the budget request section, what to do there? What I'm hearing with that question maybe what I've heard in some other areas too, which is that your, um, it gets into a chicken and egg thing. Like we're not sure what the community is saying, so we're not sure where we wanna spend these funds. And what I would advise you to do really think about uh, some of the pro budget categories that we mentioned in terms of your time as a staff member that's gonna go into this things that you anticipate you um, may be spending funds on, um, 
if you are seeing an opportunity for additional PPE, um, if you uh, are seeing some real disruption in your budget in terms of being able to um, add to your collection in a specific area. All of these things will support your community and go into supporting this project and the project you are structuring. So that said, you will also be able to, after you have this grant, if you find out that as you are implementing this, your fund spend down needs are entirely different from what you had supposed in your proposal, you'll just be able to talk to us and amend that budget. As long as it fits within the eligible expense categories, which are pretty much anything except for uh, indirect costs, library administrative costs. So put together your budget, know that you will be able to adjust it for reality after you are um, funded. Great. So the next question, I believe, goes back to one that was asked earlier. Um, so it should, they're just asking for confirmation that we don't necessarily need to know what our community needs yet. Um, so we are able to say that we will tailor our collection development and programming to meet those needs once we find them out as part of this project. Let me pause for you for a second, Samantha. I saw something in chat saying that my audio is dropping. Can you uh, just put a Y or a yes in chat if this is happening, if this is a real problem with this live session? Yeah, that seems like a real problem. OK, it's a problem. Um, Is Samantha's audio dropping or is it just mine? It's just mine. Okay. I think Samantha, I think we're gonna have to go to mostly you answering these. I <laughs> because we really need folks to get these and uh, everyone's know that we will expand our FAQ that is online to incorporate a lot of these questions. Um, or Sarah, are you there? Are you able to answer questions if Sam stays in her role as um, inquisitor or vice versa? I can jump in if anything comes up that's needed, but I think Sam will have no more answers than I will. So, <laughs> okay. But I can I can write I can uh, read out the questions if that would be helpful, Sam. Um, sh sure. I'm just if you could just keep an eye on the chat. Um, I can go through the Q and A and just ask them and answer them. So it's no problem. It's just sure. flipping back and forth. Apologies, everyone, to this, and I'll start answering stuff in chat. Great. Thank you. Um, so going back to um, the question of, um, so it's okay if we haven't identified a need in our community yet, if the goal of our project is to determine what those needs are and then tailor our collection development and programming to meet those needs. Um, to the question asker, yes, that is completely okay. Um, so the next question is, how are the funds released? Uh, during the process or at the end. So once awarded, you will receive the funds um, by January 29th, 2021, and that will be the entire amount of the funding. And then we have a question of, will you be able to include the chat and Q&A in the slides? Um, yes, what we can do is as follow up to this email, we or as a follow up to this webinar, we will send out an email with a recording to the webinar, a copy of the slide deck, and we can also include a transcript of the chat and um, these Q&A slides. Then we have another person asking, we received an ALA grant several years ago. Is the Foundant system new? Uh, yes, it is. It's fairly new to our office. Uh, we've only been using it for a few months now, but um, so 
if you have applied in the past for one of our opportunities through our previous platform, you will need to probably create an account in Foundit in order to apply for this one. Uh, the next question is, may program materials include materials for installing something like a small book no nook furnishings? Um, yes, as long as it relates to your proposed uh, community engagement project. Um, you would just need to justify that expense, like all your other uh, proposed expenses in the budget section of the narrative. And then um, can, I, can I jump in there, yep. Sam, with yep. that, if anyone can hear me in terms of those types of capital expenses, I just want to call out and I hope you can hear me that um, really what you need to do is think about your goals. So if that book nook is going to be available and uh, will really meet a need in terms of your library's service to the community and goals, explain that just directly explain it, um, both in the narrative section. And if you explain it well in the narrative section, then the budget justification is just referring back to that narrative section. But just make the case for that, you know? Great. And um, so then the next question is also around uh, budget and the money. Um, so someone's asking, what if we do not spend the entire amount? Do we need to return that back by the final reporting period? Or is there something else we should do with that? Um, no, do not return the funds that you do not spend. Uh, so if that happens, uh, there you are able to occur anything that you have not spent by um, the implementate, end of the implementation period. So we just ask that you spend all those funds by February 28th, 2022. And if you feel like you will not be able to spend the full $3,000 uh, within the implementation period, um, you can type in the budget narrative what you are thinking you will need to occur for after that period. And Mary, I see you popping back on. I'm sure you have more clarification. A, I want everyone to appreciate the squeaky sounds of Samantha's doggy in the back, since we're all working from home in this world. And B, yes, call us. You can accrue those funds, but we will help you figure out how to spend them if that is an obstacle. We will work with you on that. These funds are meant to help, help during this time. Great. Uh, the next question is around audience. So. Can a topic be related to children's issues in the community or does it need to be adults who are the stakeholders? Yes, it can be related to children's issues. Um, there is no limitation around what your target audience is for these uh, conversations that you are proposing. It's really based on what the community needs is. So if children's converse a conversation for children is needed, that's great. And then the next question is, do you allow extensions if the timetable doesn't work for the library? Um, so if you are awarded the grant for this first period and you run into an issue where um, something happens where you just were not able to uh, accomplish your conversation within the implementation period, reach out to public programs office at ala.org and we will work with you to figure out um, how we can possibly extend the timeline for you in order to get that uh, conversation happening. I want to jump on there. I hope you all can hear me that we don't have a preset notion of the medium you need to use for this conversation of um, what is the uh, expected outcomes are, we are looking to you to set those. And we know that everything could go into lockdown. You may have um, tremendous, uh, you know, connectivity issues. There may be um, real staff, com compromised staff issues. We understand that. So put your best plan together, put it in, and we will work with that. And we will be as flexible as possible with that. Another question is around if they can use this grant to um, 
do strategic planning. So yes, as long as part of your strategic planning process is having conversations with your community in order to um, develop that plan. Uh, so we really don't want you to just do um, internal or closed conversations with a select group of like town hall or library board members for this. We really want you to branch out into your communities, involve their voices. Um, Can I jump then, in and yep. read out a question, Sam and Mary? Yes. Um, we uh, Terry is wondering if we have uh, a more detailed breakdown of the dates for the second period, for the second grants, um, including implementation dates, final reports. Do we have that available? Uh, we have not published that yet. Um, we are still tweaking that. So currently, right now, um, we just have the application opening date and the deadline. We will be publishing the more breakdown of those dates um, in the next coming few months. Um, OK, uh, someone is asking if we recommend people do in-person or virtual community engagement conversations. Uh, since these times are so uncertain and we don't know where your communities are or um, the level of precautions that are recommended for your particular area, we really are looking to um, the libraries to determine what is best and is safest for the people that will be participating in these sessions. So um, we are not, the peer reviewers will not be judging or placing a priority over one type of conversation over an, another, whether it's in person or virtual. Um, so we're really just looking for you guys to determine what is best for your communities. And I just want to tag on to that. We're also aware that not everyone can do virtual or in person. There are some libraries and communities out there that don't have the broadband connectivity and are doing uh, book clubs via conference call and um, or finding jam, you know, some sort of uh, jam board or some sort of alternate way to gather community, um, have these community conversations. So that's fine too. We're looking to you to determine what is possible. And I have to say truly that the e-course is helpful for that. Um, another question that we have is around um, for the narrative planning, um, someone is planning to do multiple conversations throughout the year to address a uh, various community topics and are wondering if they should focus on just describing one conversation that they're planning or if they should include multiples. Yes, include multiples. Uh, we want as much detail as possible and um, saying that this is a series that you are planning is a great uh, note for the peer reviewers that will really help them um, see the breadth of what you're trying to do. So um, yeah, be as descriptive as possible with that. You don't need to focus on just one conversation, even though that is the requirement. So you are more than welcome to do multiple conversations. So in um, fact, I have a question from chat. Yep. Can you clarify the process if someone applies in the first wave and does not get selected? Do they need to, I understand, um, they will get feedback if they request it from the peer reviewers. Do they need to reapply for the second wave or are they automatically ushered into the second wave application? Um, so if you are not awarded in, if you apply in this first wave and are not selected for funding, um, we suggest you contact public programs at ala.org to request peer reviewer feedback on your application, which will give you an idea of the strengths and weaknesses of um, your proposal and where you might be able to edit it and uh, submit it. So you will need to resubmit um, in that sense that you can edit it. Um, so no one will be just automatically uh, rolled over. Um, it will be a conscious effort on the half, on the part of the library. And then um, another question is, will a larger national issue be considered legitimate if the issue is not specific to our uh, community. Um, 
community due to demographics. Um, yes, it's completely legitimate. Um, broad national issues, local issues, um, anything that you think speaks to a need in the community is perfectly acceptable. Um, another person, and I see this question a few times. Um, so there's some people asking how to access the course if the course is free and if the course is only available after you're awarded the grant. Um, so if I can ask my colleagues at PBO to pull the e-course link and post that in the chat, um, it is free and available now to anyone who wishes to access it. And I know there are a couple of folks on this uh, webinar right now who have already taken the e-course. And if you want to post in chat what you thought of it, push that out to your, your colleagues who are um, in this webinar. That would probably be very helpful. I think that that link has gone up a couple times now. Yep. And um, speaking of that, for those of you who have already taken the course, you do not need to retake it again if you apply for this grant and are awarded it. Um, you have already taken it. You're just ahead of the game. Um, so no need to worry about uh, spending another four hours uh, retaking. Um, another question is, is community defined as the town or can it be a county conversation? Um, that is really up to what you're proposing in your uh, project. If you are working with other libraries in your area to do a conversation and you want to make it a countywide uh, project, that is perfectly fine. Um, we just ask that you note that in the narrative. And then Mary, I saw you pop up briefly. Did you want to provide more uh, clarification on that? Um, I just want to say, and I've seen this sort of theme going by, I, I understand that the possibilities can be overwhelming here, and uh, I think it's okay to think small and immediate. It's okay to apply and say, I have never done any of this before, and I'm just hoping that this provides me with an opportunity to do this, and I feel like I can, you know, advance our library services during this time and making a case for what you see as the need and what your hopes are in terms of uh, using these grant funds and using this professional development opportunity. Um, another question is, do programs have to be lined up as far as date and time uh, whenever we're applying? Um, no, it's great if you have an idea of the date and time that you are planning to have that, but we don't require that you submit that level of um, information on there. Um, you don't need to say I'm going to be doing it March 2nd, 2021 and give a time. So that is completely okay. We understand that things are very up in the air right now and uh, planning like that without um, knowing if you have the award uh, might not be feasible. Um, so we have about two minutes left. I'll keep answering some of these questions. I just want to flag for those of you that are posting in the Q&A very specific questions about your individual libraries. Um, we might not have time to answer those. What I recommend for those is to reach out to public programs at ala.org. Um, for assistance with your individual eligibility requirements or just some uh, feedback on what topics you're considering doing. I am also putting up now um, who the outreach consultants are. So these are fellow librarians who are offering their services and uh, are available to help um, you brainstorm and um, answer questions as well. So these are divided up by region. Um, we have another slide for a few other regions that I'll put up in a moment. And if my colleagues in PPO can also put up the link in the chat to where you can find a document that lists all this on the website, that would be helpful as well. Okay, um, so we have time for one more question um, and I will read that one. Uh, so is the ALA e-course um, in order to take that, do you need an ALA membership? 
Um, no, you don't need a member to uh, a membership in order to access the eCourse. You do need to create a login with our uh, website, which is it's free um, in order to access the course, though. And again, I just want to stress that the course, it's free to everyone. Spread the word. You don't even need to apply. You don't need to apply for this grant. You don't need to get this grant. It is um, something that we were lucky to be able to develop with funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And it is uh, out there as an asynchronous professional development opportunity for anyone who wants to use it. Great. And with that, it looks like we are at time. So we're going to go ahead and close out. I would just like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar and also thank uh, my colleagues behind the scenes, um, Sarah Osman and Elena, um, and uh, of course, Mary for her wonderful presentation and um, all of you. So thank you. <laughs>